So our judges for tonight are Gene Thomas, Donald Simpson, and Joshua Brown, Baker. So I wanna thank them all for participating again. They're all repeat judges and they've done a great job in the past. And I expect no less tonight. The uh, advanced, they'll be doing the uh, basic and intermediate classes and the advanced vision is judged by Jan Lightfoot of PSA. And she has uh, submitted a number of comments about each image. I will get to that a little later. So let's start with, um, Let's see, we want to survey. All right, so let's see here. Everybody see uh, open theme, basic and intermediate groups? Yep. Yep. All right, then let's do it. All right, so we have 16 images in the basic group. And this is the first one, Austin Skyline. What are secret? We, are we going to go through them all first? Yeah, we'll go through them all. Okay. Spencer. What secrets await us? Ah, oh, shucks. Where did the oysters go? Canned heat. And this one came in untitled. Shoeshine Joni. Sounds of the Shore. Juvenile and Adult Roseate Spoonbill. Mark, please move your cursor up the photos. Yeah. <laughs> Have I ever not done that? I don't think so. <laughs> it's competing with the water droplet. <laughs> yeah. Pre-dawn flight. Mother and child reunion. Summer Dolce Vita at Lake Pflugerville. Crimson Hopper. Morning Dew. Nap time. The Chase. September 11th. Okay. This time we'll do it with some commentary by the judges. So, Austin Skyline. I don't believe we have anybody doing that one, or do we? No. Okay. What secrets await us? It's me. Josh. <clears throat> yeah, I think this is, um, especially for October, right? That spooky season, right? Hashtag spooky season. Um, I always think the hardest photos are the ones where you're taking something that really isn't there. Um, there's another example of this later that the sounds of silence or the sounds of the waves or whatever. It's kind of, they're, they're both kind of the same that they're, they're really showing you what isn't there and they're giving you kind of space to let your own interpretation go. Um, I kind of dig how it's, you know, it's just a door, but with the way it was processed, um, I don't know if, if, if you don't expect a scary clown to be on the other side of those doors then you haven't lived in my nightmares. Um, but I, I, I like how like the, the windows become almost like giant black eyes. I, I said in my comments, it looks like the little thing going through the handles is almost like a, 
nose piercing going through. Um, so, I mean, I just really think it kind of hits this tone of like, what's really going on here and kind of ask the question of like, why was this photographed? Right? Like, what does the photographer know that we don't know? Um, I like how the foliage adds, um, some foreground, right? Without it, it would just be a middle ground. So I like how the, the out of focus leaves add some, some depths. Um, I find the, the, the top left edge of the frame, just a little problematic. There's some, there's some sunlight or moonlight or something coming through, but I think it really uh, distracts just a little bit away from, uh, the center doors. Um, and you know, normally I would be kind of a stickler for like vertical lines, um, you know, for architecture photos, but for this, I don't really think that's the intent. Um, and I think the intent really is to show it as skewed and to have some of the, the angles of the, of the, of the, um, planking and the beams to be not straight, uh, because everything about this feels very kind of sketchy. And so I think if they were straight, that it would feel too right. And I like that this feels a little bit wrong. Um, I think it's probably a good choice to go black and white. Um, yeah, I, I, I dig this. I dig this vibe. Um, yeah, good. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Next is all shucks. And that would be Donald Simpson. That's oh, mine. Good. Um, well, first I, I love the play on words with the shucks and the oysters, because initially I thought it was just a pile of rocks, but the title made it even funnier to me. Uh, it's going to be a heck of a lot of work for somebody. Uh, the composition looks good for the story the artist is telling. Uh, maybe a, a few suggestions when taking a photo like this, you might try things like uh, a little bit of exposure bracketing to allow you to even out the lights and the darks um, a little bit more. Might also try using a, a little bit larger depth of field and focusing maybe a third of the way in because some of the stuff is a little bit out of focus where I didn't think it should be. Um, it looks like there may have been a person nearby. If you look in the lower right corner, there's a shadow. I'm imagining that that might be a person. I don't know. But if there had been a person around, especially somebody that has to shuck oysters, that could be looking at that pile or something and would add a uh, gesture to the photo, uh, which would increase its, uh, uh, its interest. Uh, in post-processing, a couple of suggestions you might look at would be eliminating that small shadow in the lower right corner, since I don't know what it is, but it was pulling me to it to try to figure it out. And you might consider reducing the highlights a little bit and opening up shadows in a couple of areas. But on all, I saw this as like that the guy that dumped this stuff here miss the concrete pad altogether and dump it onto the trees on purpose? Or is that the plan? And there's a whole bunch of people going to come out on the concrete and start shucking these oysters. I, I didn't know the context of the photo, but I thought the, uh, the aw shucks was, was pretty funny once I figured out what everything was. <laughs> yeah, somebody's got a lot of work. All right, uh, next is Canned Heat, Jean. All right, thank you. Um, canned Heat. Um, yeah, this is a, a fun display of hot pepper food photography. So I was fairly entertained. Uh, there's a good sense of display space with that wooden table and the blue placemat. I think those are nice touches. And then the diagonal lines of the wood grain uh, with the curved lines of the placemat, they, they add interest and give contrast to the round shape of the can. The lighting on the table and the placemat is you know, warm and it's an inviting. However, I'm kind of, kind of wishing for one pepper to serve as like the star of the show kind of pepper. Um, that star element could be something like you know, a, a unique shape, um, an increase in brightness, uh, contrasting color or shallower depth of field. You know, for example, maybe a pepper with a, a bolder shade of orange to like anchor the viewer's eye within the can. You know, as shot, uh, the center yellow pepper attracts my eye the most, which is good, but its color, size, and shape kind of blends with the, the bright highlights of the metal can. I could see this photograph featured in like a, 
a cooking or a gardening blog, you know, regarding how to kick up the heat in a tasty new recipe. Um, so I think it's, you know, very fitting for that type of activity. So, um, hey, yeah, keep up the good work on this one. And I hope uh, spicy tacos are on the menu. Okay. All right. Thanks, Gene. It's Taco Tuesday every day in our house. <sighs> uh, next is minus 10, I believe, was the, let me look at that again. Minus 10. So I don't know if that was a typo or if that's really the name of it, but we'll call it minus 10 for lack of certainty here. And that is not assigned to any judge or it was not, there's no oral critique tonight, excuse me. Uh, Shushan Joni or Johnny? That's mine. Okay. Um, I thought the exposure, color, and focus are all really well done in the photo. It's a very good contextual photo. The background's obviously a bit busy, but that's part of the context of the photo. Um, if you took another photo like this another time, you might consider perhaps having the subject looking at the camera, unless there's an obvious diversion somewhere else in the photo. Uh, to add some gesture and interest, it would be nice to capture uh, the subject that, that while they're actually doing something to add a little more interest to the photo. Um, and you could try taking a photo with a narrow depth of field to perhaps add some bokeh to the background to reduce some of the complexity. But all in all, an, a, a nice portrait type capture. Okay, thank you, Don. Sounds of the shore. Jean? Okay, yeah, this, um, this black and white photo speaks volume to me. Um, it has a subtle, complex quality, but at the same time, having a simplicity in the composition. And that interplay between the dock edge and the crisscross waves creates a visual energy for the viewer. In terms of how I interpret the photographer's intent, um, a very direct message come to mind. Hey, look at these waves. I bet you can just hear them sloshing around. Take a moment to relax. Um, so that roughly triangular shape of the dock, it kind of leads my eye directly to the waves and keeps my attention there. And then I get to explore all the ripples in the water. I like that this image is free from distractions. Um, an interesting tension is kind of created between these three elements. The diagonals of the dock plane planks themselves, that vertical push of the entire dock shape and the horizontals of the waves. And then I get a three-dimensional feel from that darkened area in the middle of the frame. And this all makes the waves appear to be moving toward the dock while the dock is pushing against the waves. So I've only discovered um, two minor details that might be considered for change. There's just a little scratch on that second dock plank from the left. Um, and then there's a kind of a heavyish vignette on the far left of the frame. But overall, this is a very calm and tranquil scene that invites the viewer to kind of just dive deeper and ponder a bit. And I appreciate the efforts. Thank you, Jean, for making me understand a little bit better than I did before. Appreciate that. Okay, next. Juvenile and adult rosette spoon bill. Spoon bill. It's me. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm critiquing a bird photo, so hang on to your hats. Let's see if I know what I'm talking about. It's um, not on a stick. <laughs> it's not on a stick, no. Um, so there's a couple things that I'd love to point out about this photo um, that I think are, are, I don't know if they're different, but it's just not what you normally see, right? So one is very cinematic crop, right? Like like two by one cinematic, 16.9, probably further than that. Um, so just this really cool, very wide angle crop but i think it really suits the subjects um and you know i think in general as you crop to your subjects um it can only really serve to make the image stronger 
Um, and I think that's a really good example of what's going on here. Secondly, generally when you're shooting birds or a bird, um, a lot of times our depth of field is set to, to get one and then everything else kind of go out of focus. But if you notice the birds aren't standing in the same plane of focus, um, the one on the left is actually a little bit closer than the one on the right is a little bit further back, maybe two, three feet. Um, but what I like is that actually both of them are sharp. Um, and I think that's kind of cool. Um, because I, it's fun kind of looking at both of them. Um, and so I also like how the, the, the bills, um, kind of created a triangle going there, right? We kind of see that triangle in the negative space. Um, and then, you know, good details in the feathers and all that, but, um, I just like that it's not a one bird versus the other. It's actually both of them, but the way they're posed and because they're facing each other, it works. Um, right. You know, if there was a, a bunch of them, you'd want to maybe focus on one, but but two, I think it's neat to, to see them both. Um, to me, the only thing that I would really change, like the water is kind of dull. Um, there may be some like hue HSL panel adjustments you could do, uh, making the blues a little bit more blue. They're kind of in the purple red right now. Um, and then the the middle feathers, especially kind of along the, the neck and mid sections, uh, they're just looking a little dirty. Um, not dirty, like not clean, but like they're not the whites aren't, aren't wide enough. I think they're, I think the sun's from above. And so the, where, where the light's hitting the top, it, it's pretty hot, but then along kind of the shadow side, um, I'd either go more contrasty and darken the shadows or like brush in more brightness, but it's kind of in that middle zone of like, it's not really shadows. It's not really highlights. It's just kind of in the middle. Um, so that'd be the only thing I'd really change is just kind of boosting some exposure or darkening some exposure either way just to make it either more contrasty or less but it's kind of in the middle to me um but i like this i like that you went for a, an aggressive crop um and i like that both of them are in focus and kind of creating this tension with the way their their beaks are so well done okay thanks next is pre-dawn flight that's mine okay um I thought this was a, a well-composed photograph with some really nice creative post-processing touches. I like the noise, the texture, contrast, and bokeh introduced while keeping many of the birds still in focus. The silhouette on the shoreline grass makes this almost look like a torn paper effect. In fact, that's what I thought it was initially. Um, looking at the, the photo really close, at least on my monitor, there seems to be some blue on both the bottom uh, left and bottom center. Um, I wasn't 100% sure what that was. It's most likely a sliver of water, sand, or grass, or something, but I couldn't quite figure it out, but I didn't think it fit quite as well with the rest of the photo. So if you had a chance to, to repost process this, you might want to try cropping it more cleanly and then add a torn paper effect because I really liked where that grass was taking us. It might've looked really nice around this entire or uh, creative photo uh, with a black background. Uh, because the silhouetted grass is, is only present on the bottom right-hand side, my eye keeps getting pulled to the left and center wondering what that actually is. Like I said, initially I thought it was uh, torn paper, but I, I really like this photo a lot. I, I really like it. Okay, thanks, Don. Next is mother and child reunion. And we do not have a critique for that tonight. Summer Dolce Vita at Lake Pflugerville. So we got some <laughs> Italian and some German. And <laughs> Josh. Yep. Yep. Um, I mean, I'm assuming both of these photos are taken at the same time and place. The, it would be astounding if they weren't. Um, but stranger things have happened. But um, I, I think both of these photos, right, great silhouettes. I think a lot of times, um, especially when we're taking pictures of people, we, we want to make sure the face is exposed. Um, but I don't think that would work here. I like that it's that golden rays of sunset. Um, and just, um, you know, people hanging out in the beach, man. I've been in the spot. It's, it's a cool spot in Lake Pflugerville. Um, you know, just go chill and hang out. And, um, you know, I, I think it shows that. Um, I, I, even though this is a panoramic crop, I would have gone even crazier with the crop in just that strip where there's people. 
uh, because then you would have gotten, you would have got from like upper right, it would have formed a triangle all the way to, or a diagonal line to lower left. And just that, so just above, just above the person's head on the far right, I'd crop there and then keep everything else the way it is. Um, I think, I think having the houses in the background, even though there's good color in the sky, I don't think that adds to the photo. Um, having the houses kind of takes you away from like living the good life. Um, especially when the houses are like touching and it's, you know, suburban Pflugerville. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's my biggest thing is that it's just, what do you show, right? What do you show? What do you not show? Um, and even though this is already a panoramic crop, I'd go even crazier and do like a, like an eight by one, um, like super panorama where it's just complete silhouettes of people in the water. And then that, those golden hues. Um, and I think that would just make it, you know, a lot stronger because that's, that's really where the subject is. Um, I think a lot of times we have an idea for a photo and we kind of push the button um, before we've totally like decided what should be in and what should be out. And a lot of times what should be out is of greater importance. And in this case, with a stronger crop, we could really get rid of the, the houses and that, that far shoreline because it, I, I think the strongest points are foreground. So, yeah. So for the rest of you, I'll just think about what you, what, what can you take out of a photo to make it better? Thank you. Next is Crimson Hopper. Morning dew. Jean, is that for you? I've got, yeah, I've got that one. Um, yeah, I find this an uh, interesting photo, not because of the obvious chair, but the way it's uniquely blended with the architecture and natural elements around it, the rectangular glass, the bright stone steps, and the condensation mixing with the grasses. Um, looking through the glass barrier is the most intriguing part of this comp composition. And the condensation has a blurred and almost a painterly effect on the chair and the grass. Um, then I guess there's that little slit of clarity between the panels, the glass panels. So my eyes first attracted to the very bright white steps then the blurred glass, and then the full clarity of the sky. So if the, the brightness of the steps was darkened a bit, it would allow for a better, better focus on the main subject, that dew covered kind of glass there. And then because of the angle of the toning on the far left side of the glass barrier, I kind of struggle a bit to decide if I'm an inside looking out or I'm outside looking in. So if half the width of that leftmost pane of glass could be cropped out, ah, the confusion disappears. <laughs> so the photo um, leads me to believe there's a sandy white beach and the ocean is far in the background. And then those tones of light and airy blues and creams all say, you know, beach theme to me. Um, these, these color tones are, you know, they're portrayed pretty nicely in the softness and consistency without hot spots or uh, reflections anywhere in the, gra in the glass. So that's, that's pretty outstanding. Um, the photographer may have used a neutral density filter or some kind of um, glare reduction technique. And so overall, I think it's an interesting beach scene despite my little visual dilemma. Hey. I didn't realize it was a beach chair. I thought it was a satellite dish until you said beach chair. And then my brain went, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next is nap time. <laughs> and uh, it's an obvious reason. Next, we have the chase. That's mine. Okay. Um, I thought this was a really creative shot, and I love the way the lines from the helmets and the clothing ripple back to the riders behind them. It helps greatly to depict movement in the scene. I wonder whether the velodrome was indoors or out, but the light was exceptionally good. Uh, I'm guessing it's indoors because most of them are. Uh, you did a great job composing the shot and choosing the correct shutter speed to capture this effect. 
kind of like a panning technique, but without the pan. Uh, if I'm really being picky, I might try to include a little bit more of the front rider, but it's not a requirement. But I really thought this was a great shot. Okay. And the last image in this series, in this group, September 11, never forget. And um, don't, no, we don't have a commentary on that tonight. All right, let's go through these and see what the judges thought. Uh, judges choice. So we had 16 entries, so we'll have uh, four awards, starting with honorable mention for Shushine Johnny by Jose Rios. Is Jose here tonight? I don't think he is. Okay. Next is Pre-Dawn Flight by William Ling. Bill, you're here tonight, aren't you? Oh yeah, I'm right here. Uh, can you give us a, just a short setup of uh, where and this was taken and your thought okay. process? Yeah, that was uh, Mission Bay uh, in San Diego and it was pre-dawn. Um, I was out uh, looking in, in a, there's sort of a nature preserve area uh, on the beach that you cannot actually walk in. So there was a road above it and I was using a 600 millimeter lens and uh, the birds were, um, you know, flying in various formations and it was just kind of magical. The light was just, uh, just the sunrise was just breaking through. And uh, of a lot of shots, this one grabbed me and I thought it looked a little like watercolor and uh, I hadn't uh, thought about the torn paper effect, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. I'll, I'll say, yeah, I like that torn paper effect. But anyhow, it's just one of many shots and it just grabbed me. So I'm glad, glad you liked it. Uh, was there any, you know, aggressive post-processing or this is pretty much the way it No, not, not really. It's pretty much like it was. Uh, I think I opened up the shadows a little bit. I wanted to show that there was some detail in the grass uh, at the bottom. I'm not sure exactly uh, what um, um, it was Mark that uh, we took. I'm not sure what he was seeing. I'm having, I'm not at my own uh, computer right now. I'm uh, still moving into a place. So I'm, I'm looking at a TV monitor across the, uh, mm -hmm. the room and I'm not seeing it on this uncorrected monitor. But anyhow, there was nothing specific other than to make it saturated and, and uh, make it sharp. Okay, great. All right. Next is Nap Time by Donna Smith, second place. Donna, are you here tonight? I didn't see her earlier. Okay. And first place is The Chase by Louis Abalafia. And Lou, I think, is here tonight. Lou, yes, I am, Mark. Uh, talk talk this to us. Is, this image also uh, taken in San Diego uh, in Balboa Park. Uh, it is an outdoor velodrome. Oh. Um, the lighting is terrible at night, which is when they, um, uh, they have their uh, number of races. And uh, slow exposures are uh, pretty much uh, mandatory unless you've got 10 flashes going off simultaneously. Um, this one uh, was, uh, because it's a slow exposure, I'm doing a, uh, uh, both a vertical and a zoom simultaneously. Um, and that'll give the double images and the shadows um, as well as the motion. Um, you take hundreds and hundreds of images to get anything uh, worthwhile. This is one of my favorites. Turned out great. Yeah, very uh, unusual, but certainly gets across the sense of motion. Is it is it cropped? Is it cropped? Um... Not much. Um, I think the only area that I cropped significantly was some of the track on the lower right hand corner. Um, but I still wanted to leave some of it in to kind of give you the illusion or give the, not the illusion, but the, 
the view that they're coming around a curve. And uh, these guys are really moving along at a pretty hefty clip, uh, 20, 25 miles an hour on uh, one speed bikes with no brakes. Uh, hmm. And I've been down there dozens of times and I only saw one crash in, in, in all that time. Um, so they uh, respect each other and, uh, and give each other room, but at the same time, they are very competitive. This is with a, probably with my 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So you've got a, a compressed uh, perspective um, as a result of uh, the telephoto. Mm. Mm, you should try selling it to the local bike shops. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's gonna, it's gonna be entered in some competition, so we'll see how it does. Good, good. Well, how many bikers are in that shot, do you think? Um, I, I, I haven't counted, but I'd say probably about 10. Um, it, it, uh, it'll vary with the race in the beginning, um, depending on the race, uh, there'll be, a, um, uh, quite a few competitors. Then, um, people will be dropped off if they haven't crossed the mark in a, uh, a certain uh, period of time. Um, uh, and people just drop out from exhaustion uh, on some of these, uh, longer races. So try to catch them early on, um, also earlier in the evening uh, when maybe the light is a little bit better. They have outdoor lights, but as if anyone has uh, shot high school or uh, gymnasiums, you know, it's a, it's a deep pit um, and the lighting is just not up to professional standards, which is part of the reason why I do this because um, as I said, they're long exposures and try to do something creatively with them. Do we have a similar velodrome in Austin? Where you oh, we get do. A similar shot? I, I wasn't aware of that. Where? Down by the Wildflower Center, right across from the Wildflower Center. Oh, that's not this kind of velodrome. No, it's not this one, but it's called the velodrome. Yeah, it's just that's just a trail. No, I don't, I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not aware that we have an indoor velodrome like this. No. Or outdoor. Okay, let's uh, look at people's choice. And uh, that's going to be here. And the people say that the bronze goes to Jose Rios for Shoeshine Johnny. I love Shoeshine Johnny. He's got some yeah. stories, man. The silver goes to Donna Smith for nap time. And Delaney Van takes the gold for Austin Skyline. Congratulations. That is a cool image. I really like that. Okay. Delaney's here. She could say, they could say something. Delaney, speak up. Yeah. Um, that's actually from my new neighborhood. So it's an exclusive view. And uh, I get to look at that and the beautiful sunset almost every night. Cool. So. Be there in F8, huh? Yeah. What's that? Just be there in F8. And that's the best way to, you know, if you can't take the pictures, if you can't, if you're not there. So congratulations yep. for being on the lookout. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on to the intermediate section. We have 20 images. And uh, we'll go through these without commentary and we'll come back to the judges. Don't forget cursors. Cursors. Well, no, Curse the cursors. This is what you're looking at. I just want you to know that. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Josh. No, I'll, it won't make a difference. It'll still happen. Uh, <laughs> first image is attack angle. Next is Rubberneck. <laughs> Dragonfly or Machine. Feeding. Business as usual.
and all dewlap display. Do these pants make me look fat? <laughs> Gray winter day. An original Edison, number one. Morning light. There's a line to get in. Who do you think I am? Stairway to creepy. Should put some music on for this one. Maestro of the fireflies. <laughs> Bubbles in blue. The itsy bitsy spider. An original Edison, number two. Docking maneuver. <laughs> I'm impressed they spell maneuver like that. I... Well, that kind of gives away <laughs> who it could be, don't you think? I would have gone wrong after the second letter. Lines of spice. Crackers waiting. And is the first run through very interesting images there yeah okay so let's go through them again this time with the judges commenting let me get my cheat sheet lined up here that it's me already okay take it away I, josh i mean that's great <laughs> like i don't know <laughs> the, the colors are amazing like the background um, just like this really cool transition of orange and greens and yellows and it's great and the feathers are awesome and it's doing something cool it's not on a stick you can see the little tiny claws look at the tiny claws um i don't know it's great look I, two bird photos out of out of six i get to talk about um but this one's fun like i i love this one the only thing if i had to make i wouldn't change this but if you wanted to make a change there's a little bit of negative space on the right hand side you just bring it in just a touch like three percent more um but i love this photo it's great um i think when we talk about backgrounds and photos this is kind of what we're talking about with like clean backgrounds imagine what the same photo would look like if there was a whole bunch of foliage behind it and it was like real like out of focus and highlights and distracting but it's not it's like smooth but not in a way that distracts from um this bird looking straight at your eyes as it's coming in for the kill um yeah, it's great. Shoot more yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like those invisible sticks. <laughs> if there was a stick photoshopped out, I'll be very impressed. That that's very no. good Photoshop skills. I think attack angle says it all. Yeah, I think so. Okay, rubber neck. Okay, we do not have commentary tonight. It's an interesting image, and I certainly understand the title. Dragonfly or machine. Uh, all I'll say is that I shoot a lot of these and I'm very impressed that all of the dragonflies in focus. That's a really good job. Feeding. Josh. Yeah, I, you know, I think one of those like rules of wildlife is always like, oh, it has to be at, you know, this angle of light or that angle. You have to shoot with this or that. Um, and I, I love the way this feels like either early morning or late afternoon light just kind of coming across the, the blades of grass there. I like how the, the camera is low, 
Um, and we know it's low because we're looking through some of the blades of grass that are out of focus in front at the very bottom of the screen. Um, and then there's a moment, right? You know, we can talk all we want about, you know, composition or light or whatever, but a lot of times it comes down to what separates the good from, from the rest is, is there a moment? Is there something happening? Um, you know, in the last one, we had a sleeping owl, like that was a cool moment, right? And this one here, we have, you know, a mama bird feeding a baby bird, like it's, there's whole books written about that. Um, and that's what we're seeing here with this nice, like directional light coming across, uh, you know, the red and the blue of the mama and the kind of fuzzy, peach fuzzy, like oranges and yellows of, of the baby here. Um, and again, I think this is another good example of super cropped in to show just what we need to see. And there's nothing else. Um, there's no, there's no distracting, you know, there's not a truck in the background. You know what I mean? Like, there's not like, you know, a, a, a gas station sign over on the left or something, right? It's, it's seeing just what we want to see, uh, which is this moment uh, with this good kind of directional light coming across. And even though we're seeing this, the shadow side of the birds, um, there's enough detail to still receive the story. So well done. Okay. Business as usual. Um, we do not have critique tonight. Lots of triangles. The annual dewlap display. That would be. Yeah, yeah that's mine. Um, yeah, this is a, a rather striking photo of a dewlap display moment from a you know, popular backyard lizard. Uh, the composition is great regarding uh, like the juxtaposition of the round shape of the dewlap against the vertical stripes of the background. And it kind of creates this tension that you can feel. And then that really serves to emphasize the dewlap action. Um, dark, the, the brown background is soft, it's nicely blurred and the lizard is nicely separated from the background. So that really brings your attention right to the face and the, and the dewlap. So I imagine this critter is attracting somebody's attention nearby um, and that diagonal placement of the face, it makes me very curious as to what the lizard sees. The eyes sharp and focus and also has a catch light and that strengthens the viewer's connection. I really like the amount of detail, even on the skin, that little, those little blue dots mixed with the green, that, that makes for a nice contrast. And then for correction, the only minor considerations that I thought of was um, maybe putting the, the dewlap in a, a stronger focus if possible. And I realize these critters don't stop and pose for anybody. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta act fast. And then maybe choosing, um, some more even lighting or even flash to eliminate that distinct shadow area on the head. So overall, a, a, great, sh a great shot of a, a fleeting moment. Uh, good job. Okay, thanks, Jean. Do these pants make me look fat? Gray winter day. An original Edison. Morning light. There's a line to get in. Donald. Yeah, that's mine. Um, first, I, I really love the title of this photo. <laughs> it causes your eyes to kind of hunt around looking where the line starts and, and stops. I think the color composition, exposure and focus were spot on. There's a lot of detail in the photo, like veins in the leaf, texture of the insects, etc. cetera. Um, in post-processing, you could consider pulling the brighter green background leaf down a bit because it tends to pull my eye to it instead of to the main subject area. But other than that, it's a, it's a nice shot to be able to find something like this and then and then the title really pulled me in. Okay. Who do you think I am? Where am I? Okay. 
Stairway to Creepy. Maestro of the Fireflies. Don. That's, that's me again. Um, I absolutely really love this particular photo. Um, the setting, the yeah, composition, the, the color, the focus, and the bokeh are just terrific. The natural uh, fall off on the focus creates wonderful depth to the image. The maestro in the title makes you go right to the baton and the praying mantis's arm. I somehow wonder if this isn't a composite. If not, it's incredible. If so, nicely done. Uh, for me personally, my only idea would be to print it and hang it on a wall. <laughs> It, uh, that says it all, doesn't it? Okay. Um, Is that from in here? And I should have done that. Let's see. Okay. Is that our judges or is that? Yeah. Next is Bubbles in Blue. All right, that's, uh, that's me. Okay. So yeah, this um, this photo has such interesting contrasts and lines and textures. Um, I was kind of able to lose myself in it for a bit. And these all of these lines and textures they they coexist, you know, effortlessly, uh, peacefully, you know, in this bubbling blue lagoon of, of bubbles. Um, I'm not quite sure what that white patch in the center of the frame is but it brings my eye directly to it. And those two largest bubbles in the center. Uh, there seems to be like a crisscross pattern of bubbles and ripples located uh, slightly left of center in the frame. And then there are diagonal lines reaching from bottom left to top right along um, the dark blue formations near the bottom of the frame. So, um, as I explore this photo, I feel like I'm taking a journey through texture, which is kind of cool. Uh, the blues in the water are well-toned and saturated without being overwhelming. And the highlights of the bubbles are also toned very well with respect to the contrasting shadows. In terms of improvement, I don't have too much to say regarding a texture. However, there's a out of focus area in the upper left corner it may have been intentional or not. Um, and then the dark blue flecks and lines in the lower third of the frame, they detract maybe only slightly from the clear in-focus bubbles in the center. Um, what I really like is a sense of mystery that the center white object gives to the composition. Um, I can see this photo as wall art a texture or even a background for a more creative composite image. Um, it's a great capture with many subtle in intricacies. Okay, thanks, Jean. Next is uh, the Itsy Bitsy Spider. An original Edison, number two. And another bird for you, Josh. Docking maneuver. No, no, I'm sorry. That's for Gene. <laughs> Never mind. I do that. <laughs> it's okay. J, <laughs> JT, JB. What's the difference? All right. Uh, no problem. Um, yeah. Uh, the bright green highlights of this hummingbird's backside are just spectacular. That's the thing that you know really gets me. There's good sharpness on the eye and the beak. And I like that lower forked branch of flowers where it's softer focused and it leads the eye and points right toward the bird. Um, the yellow and green contrasting color scheme, it works well to pop the hummingbird from that softly blurred background. And then the, the wings and tail are sharp and they're, they're frozen very, very well. Uh, due to good choice in shutter speed, uh, or maybe a flash, I'm not sure. Um, the curve in the bottom of the left wing, that adds kind of a nice touch, gives you a sense of wings in motion. And then I really like the fan-shaped tail feathers. Um, 
but give the bird that unique shape. And then everything is just working synergistically in this photo. In terms of improvement, um, maybe consider cropping out a small part of that, the dark brown items located at the bottom of the frame, or maybe just toning them similarly to the rest of the yellow orange background. Uh, this is a great shot of a, a complex subject and a fast moving bird. Good job. Thanks, Jean. Next is Lines of Spice. That's me. Josh, I hope you didn't confuse, you get confused by lines. <laughs> yeah, there's something white in the center and the photo has lines in it. Um, <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> um i you know i um again i'm guessing this is also from the same person that had the crackers one um so let me just start off by saying i applaud the effort for setting up photos um you know i i think there's a definite for me photos that have intention behind them um always kind of get bumped up because i can see you working through things um and so you know i think we have good diagonals coming from the upper left to the lower right and then they end in this really cool like semicircle, right? So we have part of a circle, part of a triangle, which are things that you know the brain really likes. Um, this kind of like walnut e thing. I don't know what that is. Walnut, I'm guessing. And then a bay leaf, um, all against the spice. Um, I, I think all of that's good. I think the the um, right the 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 diagonal of the lines kind of serves as a as a weight against those two elements. So I think all of that's looking really good. Uh, for me, the lighting's just a little bit harsh. Um, it feels like it's coming from straight above um, instead of coming from maybe more like a, uh, I don't know, maybe like a 10 o'clock angle instead of a noon angle, um, just kind of raking across. And it, the light feels very close uh, because the fall off is very fast. Um, and I think the light a little bit further away um, and at a slightly different angle could really make this feel more like a, a nice morning light instead of kind of, a, it just feels a little harsh, especially on the top. Um, it goes very bright, very dark, very quickly. Um, and so just some things there, or maybe more of a fill card. I think there was a white fill card used just gauging based on the, the walnut. You can see there's some white detail in the shadows. I don't know if that's from the plate or from another fill card, but I just want that light kind of coming through that channel of the bay leaf and the walnut instead of just straight on that, that walnut. Um, but again, I, you know, I applaud the effort. I applaud the, the work that went into this to create something. Um, the other thing, the white balance just seems a little warm um, and a little on the green side. I don't know. There's just some harshness to it that I can't quite put my finger on exactly on how to correct. Um, but I applaud the effort for setting something up. Um, let's just work on lighting just a little bit more. And I think we can really make some stronger images. But compositionally, it's really well done. And it's not a walnut. <laughs> what is it? It's a nutmeg. Nutmeg. Oh, is it nutmeg? Okay. Yep. Does that change uh, your opinion? No. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think it would. <laughs> uh, okay. It's good. I mean, it's good. It's it's a great place to start for for food. Keep keep going with it because food's fun. And now we have crackers waiting for the spices. That's uh, that's mine. Okay. Um, first thing I saw when I got this was I was looking at these photos just before lunch. I had to take a break because this thing made me hungry. But, you know, like you said, food photography can be a lot of fun. I thought the composition and the focus were spot on. But there are some things I think uh, you could consider while taking a photo such as this. Uh, the cheese dish on the right side is much taller than the crackers below. And with the light source coming from the right, a shadow's being cast on the crackers, making them kind of dark. Um, might consider either rearranging the dish or changing the light to come from the other side. Uh, slightly rearrange the crackers so that not quite so many shadows are cast from the triscuits to the, uh, the things below. Um, in post-processing, you may want to have a little fun with a couple of ideas. Uh, crop in from the left until you get to the left edge of the first triscuit that would accomplish getting rid of the large shadow being cast and perhaps create a slightly better balance to the photo. Since the cheese and the dish it is in are properly exposed, you might consider bringing up the exposure on the darker crackers 
Perhaps just bringing up the shadows would do the trick. If you choose not to do the crop above, you might consider removing the small corner of something in the top left-hand corner, basically cleaning up the edges, some things that just will pull your eye uh, away. I, I mean, I think the color, like Josh said, uh, a bit, bit warm as well, but um, certainly a, a, a nice photo to, uh, they're not always easy to do. Like you set it up in your house, you got a chance. Sometimes I do food photography in a restaurant and unless I can get a seat by a window where the light's right, it's pretty tough to do. All right. Well, that concludes uh, our run through the intermediate class tonight. So we will look at how the judges ended up ranking them. We have uh, 20 images, so we'll have five uh placements let's see winning images let's go to judge's choice so honorable mention first honorable mention goes to cheryl callum for feeding cheryl you here tonight Okay. I'm here. Sorry. Oh, good. All right. It takes a while to find that mute button. <laughs> <laughs> this is really cool. Where'd you take this? Um, actually, I was in Florida. Okay. And Ooh. I was laying on my stomach. <laughs> yeah. Josh kind of figured that. Yeah. Well done. Um, Thanks. Anything unusual about the situation or? Well, the the parents and the baby didn't even realize I was there and literally walked up. That is almost full frame. Wow, nice. For like almost minimum focus distancing to me. And it was a really cool experience. Was this in a sanctuary? Uh, no. Just out in the front yard? No, it was... It was like a, I don't know, like a state park or something. I don't remember exactly hmm. the name of it, but yeah, it was, it was amazing. Great. Well, Could you repeat? And they didn't care. They didn't care. Could you repeat the location? I didn't catch it the first time. It was in Florida. Okay. Thank you. What kind of bird is that? That is a sandhill crane in her colt. <sighs> They're wow. actually really big birds, like three feet tall birds. Very nice. Second place is Attack Angle by Nick Grossman. Congratulations, Nick. Are you here tonight? Well, I guess Nick didn't make it, but uh, well done. I'd be curious to see if this is done with a flash. Seems like it. Yeah, definitely a flash. Yeah. And first place, Maestro of the Firefly. A very amazing image. Gene Thomas, congratulations. And tell us how you did this. Thank you. Uh, I guess my imagination got the best of me. And I just <laughs> imagined this scene. And what I was really thinking of was just playing with Boca, <laughs> you know, that was my objective. <laughs> so um, I swim in the neighborhood pool and right around this time of year, there's always praying mantises like hanging on to the, <laughs> to the ropes, but they're not really alive, but they're oh. pliable. Ah. So um, in my studio, it just happened to kind of get, I could position it this way and its claws are kind of sticky so you could put that little um, baton in his hand and then things just got funky in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, A plus for imagination <laughs> and execution. That is okay. lovely. <laughs> it's so fun, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, I had no idea that would make such such an impression. But okay. Great lighting. I mean, you know, it's got, you know, it's just got everything it needs. What's the background? 
Yeah, so um, I have this, since I don't get out much in the heat, uh, I, I'm like thinking, what can I do in the house? So I'm, I've got, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, I, I, I built like paper cutouts that look like um, tree trunks. So that's the faint impression of the brown tree trunks back there. Mm-hmm. And then I, I just had several strings of LED lights that were um, used. But the ones in particular that are the faintest, that look like, you know, winged creatures, um, slightly yellow. I was actually moving the camera there to get some camera movement in addition to the bokeh uh, to bring that that firefly thing to happen. Interesting. So is that composited then? Because you only have motion on that on part of just. The- the only composite were those fireflies with okay. the camera motion. Okay. I only brought that in because it was more of like a, a background sort of element. Yeah. You know, I wanted all the bright um, bokeh balls up front. The blue is supposed to represent the treetops and whatnot, the middle brown, the tree trunks, and then the fireflies, all the golden. But I want, wanted something further in the background. I just couldn't do it all in, in, in one shot. Everything but those little little wing things way in the back. Well, I sure hope you'll consider entering this in the creative uh, section of the uh, oh. club. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that'd good be a good feedback. one. It's yeah, that'd really be good. nice. It's really, really nice. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, moving on to the people's choice. For this division, we have three places. Um, We have Maestro of the Fireflies taking the bronze. We have Morning Light by Cheryl Callan taking the silver. And we have Attack Angle by Nick Grossman taking the gold. Okay, I may have made a, let's see, let's look at Judge's Choice. Somewhere we had a tie, I'm trying to remember which category it was in. Hang on, let me see. Number two, honorable mentions. Oh, on that one. Maybe it's in the other group. Okay. Well, now moving on to the advanced group. Got to select competition. I thought there were supposed to be two honorable mentions. What was the second? There were. Oh, no, no. That, that, okay. I missed it. Okay. Yeah, there were. Let's see. Was that 20 intermediate? Movies? I thought there were supposed to be. Yeah, there should have been two honorable mentions and then one, two, three. All right, let me just double check where that. uh, Let me look at that because I go to our website to see. Okay, that was open theme intermediate, right? Okay, go to. No, not just the show. That was intermediate. And we'll go with four or five, weren't there? There are five images. Five. So there's two honorable mentions. There we go. It was okay. feeding and docking maneuver. That was okay. Great. Did I skip? I may have skipped over this one. Probably did. I, I, when you read uh, it, yeah, I think you did. Sorry about that. Okay, so there's our two honorable mentions and third, second, and first. Okay. All right, so now let's go to the advanced group. And uh, you need more check boxes there. You only got like 12 of them. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's what's coming up for the inner club. Okay, so let's go to 
Why he has this in chat, but does anybody have a request for what type of photographer or speaker we should get for end of November? Anybody with something to show? Sounds not, good to me. Yeah, not everybody at once. Try to keep it down a little bit. <laughs> Putting everybody on the spot. Ah, uh, no. Well, if you do, just um, uh, one like, yeah, Todd White, yeah. <laughs> it's fun when you get to bring in. I, I saw it. I, I was the one who set it up, then I had to miss it. But yeah, Todd's a good, good, good guy. Okay. So we're going to go through the advanced group uh, quickly. We've got uh, Milky Way over the lake. Glam, Dalton? or is that zero zero glam? I'm not sure. Double O. Double O glam. Okay. Yeasted pumpkin bread, French toast with fork. The dunes are great. All about the base. Garden Denizen. Men working. Sedona at night. Play with fire. Singer in Bokeh Bubble. The Milky Way and the Dells. Losing My Mind. Solitude. Palmer, Ev Palmer Events Reflection Pool. Bohemian Serenity. Queen of the Night. Okay. So these images were judged by Jan Lightfoot uh, of the PSA. And she has comments that I will read tonight. Well, what do you prefer? You prefer to have them visible or you want me to read them to you? Because I'd rather just make visible. them visible and let everybody read them themselves. Yeah. Visible, I think. Okay, visible. we'll do it that way. So uh survey with critiques and um okay so we have 16 images to consider and we'll just go through them once and let everybody look at the image and read the sort the critique
Okay, that is the group of images for this month. Look at the judge selections. And uh, should have four placements. Honorable mention is the Milky Way and the Dells, Steve Burkich. Beautiful. That's my favorite of your, your star shots yet. Talk to us about this. Uh, that was taken in uh, Prescott, Arizona, uh, when we were out there in September. Also, where I got the one there, the Cathedral Rock. But uh, yeah. Um, they got these neat little granite formations, the granite dells there, and went, climbed up top and set up. And actually, I was shooting right into town. I had to use my uh, filter for the uh, city lights and stuff, my light pollution filter, but seemed to come out and got some new toys and tricks for 
bringing out the Milky Way. Spectacular job. Did you uh, use any lighting on the rocks or was that just natural? No, that, yeah, I did some uh, lighting on the rocks. Actually, I think that was a, it, it's a composite um, that was taken when I was setting up, getting everything lined up for the Milky Way. Okay, great. Really love it. Third place, Play With Fire, Josh Baker. Yeah, this was a fun one. Uh, she wasn't wrong about getting close. That that front flame was like maybe a foot from the front of my lens. Uh, I could I could absolutely feel the heat coming off of it and could hear it like snapping and crackling. So that was fun. Um, so were yeah, you was, really, were you really stopped down for this then? Uh, I was probably like at five six. Really? Hmm. Well, yeah. So my exposure is for the sky. Um, so my exposures for the sky and the flames, uh, so I was probably like, I, uh, so 100, maybe 200, five, six, one, 200. Um, and then, um, there's a, a blue light on the ground shining up. You can see it like on our abdomen. So there's blue coming up and then there's an orange light from above. Um, and so then, um, that's all gets shifted back to neutral. So it makes everything a little more blue, makes the sky a little more blue, but it also made her eyes a little bit more blue by having that blue light shining up into them as well to really bring that out. Yeah. Well, the lighting her blue eyes just worked out perfect. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, second place men working. That's a good actually one. most of them aren't working. Uh, as the uh, as the uh, judge noted, they're managers. Yeah. Well, anyway, I caught this downtown when I was uh, going to shoot some architecture, I believe, and just happened to come across this scene. And I love. I like, I like the way the dust was flying and gave us, you know, some interesting uh, texture and lighting effects yeah i like how it says use the other side and it's pointed to his butt that's kind of funny <laughs> yeah, i didn't think of that <laughs> but no, also you, josh <laughs> but also if, I, I don't know how many of you have cut concrete with that kind of saw there's a smell that is only comes like that's only from that cut concrete and it has uh, such a distinctive smell like i had to do that a lot growing up construction and like that's what i that was the first thing i was like i could smell this photo I don't know. That's a weird thing, uh, but. Okay. And uh, first place goes to Alan Irby. We're all about the bass. Our concert shooting wizard. Where are you, Alan? Wow, that was unexpected. Um, yeah, I was at a drink and click, which is not at all associated with uh, uh, Natsis or this group. And I was walking back to the car and the bouncer pulled me in and says, hey, good band. You got your camera gear. So um, I, it, just one of those things that just kind of popped into my lap. And um, out of the many uh, pictures that um, I, I got, this black and white version of the uh, guest bass player was, it just really spoke to me. It just told me the story. So. Oh, well, great capture. Good timing. What was the venue? Yeah, thank you. Uh, question, Alan, was where was this taken? Oh, uh, Speakeasy, I think is the name of it. Is it on Congress? Yeah. Great. Yes. Well, well done. Thank you. All right. Uh, now we have People's Choice. And third place for bronze goes to Gary Hook for yeasted pumpkin bread with all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it makes me really hungry, I tell you. <laughs> Second, uh, silver goes to Dave McGuire for Milky Way Over the Lake. Yeah. Dave, are you here tonight? 
I am. All right. Talk to us. Okay. This was taken in Southern Oregon. Those mountains were actually in probably California. It's a composite. Uh, foreground is probably a minute and a half. Background is a blend of two images. And there's no light pollution whatsoever. That helps. It does. Yeah. Well, you. I started counting the stars. I got up to my well, 4,000, but I had to quit. <laughs> Very nice. I I mean, just two that. images? Um, the foreground is, is a longer exposure. The background, I blended two. Yes, just to get rid of the noise. There, there were 15 seconds at 3,200 ISO, I think. Sounds nice. about right. Certainly love your Milky Way. It's uh, Thank you. really cool looking. And when, uh, oh, here we go. And, <laughs> I don't believe it. And uh, you did it again. <laughs> Queen of the night. I, I understand what the judge was saying, but I got to say, I was still really wowed by this. I, I love the lighting and the sharpness the detail the it's beautiful thank you this this is a plant that a neighbor gave us a cutting of 25 years ago and it took us 16 years before we realized it bloomed like this wow and i've tried it blooms maybe once twice a year once i mean it just blooms at night and then wilts and it's taken me a long time to come up with just get a picture of her. We call her Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see why. Feed me. Yeah. Uh, so what would what you use for lighting? How was your, what was your lighting setup? It was a big studio light with a big diffuser uh -huh. on the right, single source. Okay. And Huh. And wow. I use 100 to 400 because it's so big. I've tried in the past using a macro lens and you just can't get everything in focus. Uh -huh. So I had to back out. And this is the first time I've used this lens for that. How so, big is this? Uh, I think Roughly. one of the blooms is maybe six inches in diameter when you look at the outer fringes of, of the back okay. pedals. So it's, it's pretty, pretty big. big. Yeah, it's pretty big. They're yeah. they're big. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to watch them to know when they're going to bloom. You do, and and they're on these little skinny stems that that if if there's any wind, you, you got to have a flash or have a lot of light. Well, so that you your your patience paid off. Thank you. That's really you. quite yeah. stunning. All right. Well, folks, that concludes tonight's uh, competition. I yeah. Want thank, I want to thank all of the contributors for so many phenomenal images. We had so many different types of photos yeah. this round. Yeah. Well, we're we had landscapes and we flowers and birds and portraits and street and let's well, get food and yeah. Yeah, the open on. the open theme really really was uh, was really brought everything out. Yeah. Do we, what's the theme for next month? I water, it's water, water, water in all its forms. <laughs> this is going to be great. <laughs> I expect some snow pictures. Yeah. <laughs> you think? Snow, steam, water vapor, clouds, <laughs> yeah. water, and I'm guessing some mermaid pictures. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, mermaid. Watch his face. <laughs> maybe mermaid i don't know pool pictures uh some of my driveway where i turn a water hose on unsuspecting models <laughs> and, anyway i would like to just again say that for all of you people uh members that are you know we're here tonight most of you have had some comp some entries that have won i mean and it clearly you know stand above the average, and I, I hope you will consider uh, entering those 
in the interclub competition, all you have to do is, you know, register them just like you do for uh, the regular competitions. It would be good for our club to have, you know, a good uh, solid group of images to select from for our first uh, foray into the interclub uh, world. So please uh, consider it. I, I know that there's a lot of good ones out there from all three classes. So just because you're not in the advanced class, don't think you don't have worthy images. You do. I've seen them. Yeah, um, talking to you, Evelyn. Yeah. Are we so I, all the entries? I, again, I want to thank our judges, uh, Gene, Don, and Josh. You did a great job tonight. A lot of great commentary and uh, good feedback for the photographers. So, um, Let's do this again next month. Yeah, I'm down <laughs> if y'all are down. All right. I just wanted to quickly jump in and ask, uh, if, I wonder how many people would really like to hear from our bird photographers uh, in a kind of a panel to, uh, with the, or how to take, your, how to take pictures of uh, hummingbirds or Dave, uh, Robert, my goodness, we've got a lot of bird photographers who could give us a great program. Any, any, anybody want to do it? Hey, you're the godfather. I've done it for uh, the Bass Trap Audubon Society. They had me out there uh, right before COVID, and they really weren't interested in birds. They wanted to know how we do what we do. So I've got kind of the makings of something like that already. But I couldn't do it in November. I'll be out of town. Oh, shucks. Uh, I think that's a good idea for we'll some time. Next year. Yeah, I'd love to do it. Um, yeah, it's pretty amazing what the, the final product is compared to what the um, pictures are. People don't realize how much nature photography gets um, uh, cropped in order to get the whole bird into the picture, that kind of thing. You don't want to be chopping wings off. It doesn't work too well. <laughs> Unless they're going to the grill. Yeah, ch chicken wings. I'm down for some chicken wings. <laughs> Tastes like chicken. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah. Get some buffalo good? mild on them, a little medium. Mm. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Awesome, guys. All right. Well, I'm signing off. Y'all have a great night. Thanks for joining. Um, Thanks, everybody. We'll Thanks, Mark. Thank you, sir. See y'all soon. Yep. Oh. See ya. Bye, y'all. <laughs>